So today we're going to do the handover video on this Leica Ekivip H4112 DS. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. I'd like to begin the video by explaining that the vehicle hasn't had a valet as of yet. I just want to get this video out to you in preparation for your handover. So firstly, if we come over to the passenger side, you will notice that you've got your fill-up points which are just located underneath this cap. You've got your diesel fill-up points at the top and your ad blue which is below. The ad blue has been topped up from factory but I will warn you the vehicle will be quite thirsty on ad blue for the first 7,000 miles or so so just keep an eye out you will get a warning light on the dash that just alerts you as to when that ad blue needs topping up. Opening up the passenger side You'll notice in all of your windows, including the big window at the front, you've got Remis cab blinds. Simply pull this like so to release and then slide the blind across, allowing the magnetic strip to connect up. As I mentioned, you've got the same on the other side and for the front window, just simply pinch them two white little tabs in the middle and pull the blind all the way down and that will completely black out the entire cab. It's a very similar story for the windows on the inside of the vehicle but I'll show you how they can be blacked out just shortly. When pushing them back in, just be delicate, try and keep the blind lined up and clip that in like so. You don't want to twist this or anything as it, you could potentially damage the blind so just bear that in mind. Now on the passenger side, you've also got access to your bonnet release catch. That is actually just located here. Pull that to release the bonnet. And so with the bonnet open, there's just a couple things just to show you underneath here. The main thing being if you're ever going to jump start the vehicle. So if you jump start in the vehicle, you can see that as indicated on the cap here, it's a little bit difficult to see on the video, but there's a plus sign on that cap. Lift the cap up and you've got your positive terminal which you can connect to there and your negative terminal can just connect to any body part of the vehicle this being one just down there as indicated by the little sign as i mentioned there the main things that you know uh, need to know if you are jump starting the, the vehicle but just to point out a couple more things you've got your um engine oil access points here you've then got your brake disc fluid up here your engine coolant which is just there and then you'll also notice that your washer fluid is just located in the corner here which you can top up nice and easily. Now moving on from the bonnet and around the side of the vehicle you'll notice that we've got your habitation door open at the moment I'll jump in there shortly once we've done the outside you'll also notice that you've got a small locker here now this as this vehicle is fitted with a double height floor uh, it does give you a little bit of access to that double floor should you need to store anything underneath there. There is a larger access door on the other side of the vehicle which I'll show you when we move over to the side. Before we move on on the inside you've got your fridge vents. As you can see this is a Dometic fridge. Um, this is where the uh, fridge pulls all of its air from so my best advice would be if it is a hot day especially and this uh, side of the vehicle is uh, is in direct light of the sun what I'd recommend is pulling the awning out or keeping this area under shade as this will just allow the fridge to run a little bit more efficiently as this is where the fridge pulls all of its air from to cool the system now you can also buy winter covers for these if you are storing the vehicle they simply connect onto these little clips here one for the top and one for the bottom should you need them when you're storing them and you'll notice underneath here you've got a little flap which uh, gains you access to your gas barbecue point now you'll need your gas on for this to operate uh, as you can imagine and then up at the top you've got a little red valve which will allow you to release the gas and then you can connect your gas barbecue point up and then it's ready to be used. Moving towards the back of the vehicle, you've got a really good sized garage in this motorhome. And you can see with the garage door open, it gains you access on the inside of the garage. So we've got a few things in here to talk you through. Now, this vehicle with it being the DS model, which gives you two bench seats at the front uh, of the motorhome, will allow you to uh, see and travel to ad additional passengers. Now I'll show you how that, uh, how that can be um, transformed shortly, but you'll notice that you've got in the back here, the back rests for them seats uh, when traveling. You've also got some spare cushions here, which will sit on the back, which will provide the passenger with some back rest. 
In here as well, this vehicle has been fitted with a telly, so that's where your telly box is, uh, along with a couple of other boxes. You've got your carpets in the back here, and this motorhome has got an external shower point. You can see that the shower head is just here, and just using that clip there, that will connect directly into the shower, and then it will allow you to use it. I'll show you where that is shortly. And then you'll also notice you've got a rafter here for the awning and the awning winder. I'll come on to the awning uh, just in a minute. Uh, the main thing that you need to know in the garage is if you have a draining down, um, that your first drain down point is actually located in here and it's all electric. So this is your first drain down point that we've come to in the motorhome. This is your waste drain down point. So you've got three main drain down points in the motorhome. You've got your waste, which is located here. You've then got your fresh drain down point, which is actually located on the inside of the vehicle. And then you've got your drain down point for your boiler. They're all extremely important. My best advice is when you're not using the vehicle to leave the vehicle completely drained down. Now that that isn't um, this that isn't uh, necessary uh, for the summer because obviously if you do leave water in the vehicle, uh, especially in these conditions, it's not going to freeze. But I find that if you get into the habit of getting that drained down, it will leave you in the habit of when it comes the winter time, everything's drained out of the vehicle. We tend to find that the most customers that have issues with frost damage are the ones who aren't in the habit of draining down the system and ultimately leave water in the tanks that then subsequently crack them. So just bear that in mind. Now to operate this, all you'll need to do is you click this button here that will release it and, we'll, and all you've got to do is drive over a large grid when you're on the campsite click that button and that will drop all of the water the same goes for the fresh water and the boiler which is on the inside um, and once you've drained down the majority of the water what I'd personally recommend is leaving all of your drain down points open because as you're traveling home the vibrations of the road will just ensure that all that residual water makes it, it makes its way out of the tank at the end of the day it is just fresh water um, so it doesn't obviously um, hold any harmful chemical or anything so you're absolutely fine to leave them open uh, but like I mentioned if you drain the majority of the water down uh, before you leave site it will just ensure that that residual water on the way home will make its way out. Now you'll also notice this vehicle is, uh, or this garage area rather, is heated. So you've got a little heat exchanger here which pulls it from the front into the back and they'll keep this area nice and warm. So if you've got bikes in here or wetsuits, anything wet will be good to go. And just below here you have got a little drain down point as well. So if they've got anything wet in here that makes its way, it can make its way out of the vehicle. You've also got a 230 volt plug which is dead handy because if you've got electric bikes you can charge them in the back here. Please bear in mind, however, and this goes for all of the three pin sockets on the inside of the motorhome, that you must be plugged into 230 volt electric for these to operate. If not, they will not operate, it won't work. So please ensure that you are plugged into 230 volt mains before your three pin plugs can operate. You've then got a little switch here, which is the light on the back of the garage. And then you'll also notice you've got three compartments or two compartments rather, which are just located here. And with these compartments open, you can see that you've got one for storage, which is just here. And then the other one contains the pump. You don't need to access the pump. This is really only here for uh, when the technicians are working on the motorhome. Uh, but this one can be used for a little bit more storage should you need it. And then finally, before moving on from the garage, there's two final things. You'll notice you've got a sticker here which indicates that you've got a maximum of 250 kg load in the garage, so plenty um, of weight can be put into here. And then finally, as this vehicle has got an island bed and has been fitted with a height adjustable option, you'll notice another switch which is just here, it's quite difficult to show, there we are. Looks similar in fact to the switch which is for the wastewater. And then all you've got to do is click up or down to lower the bed. And what that will do is on these tracks, it will allow you to raise and lower the bed depending on how much you want storing in the garage. At the moment, it is at its lowest position, but if you want to take it all the way up, it will go in line with this top board here and give you plenty of space. And that can just be done just through this switch here. And that all runs off the 12 volts.
Moving around to the back of the vehicle, you'll notice that you've got your reversing camera up at the top. There's actually two cameras on there. You've got one as a rear view camera and one as a reversing camera, which will show you closer, uh, or sorry, angled down closer to where the bumper is, which will give you a little bit of a, an idea of depth. Move, moving to the other side, you've also got another access point here into the garage, which is nice and accessible. And you'll also notice on this side, you've got the same switch again, which will turn on and off the light in the garage area. Now, before I forget, nearly forgot then, uh, your awning, I will send you a separate video showing you how to operate the awning. Um, now, please bear in mind that if it is a windy day, uh, not to use the awning, because if you get any sort of breeze underneath this awning, it could potentially pull and rip away from the van, damaging your van and damaging others. So it's just not worth it. If it's a windy day, take the awning back in. Now, as I've shown you in the garage, you've got a little awning winder in there. Connect that into there. It's just telescopic so you can extend it. Wind the awning out and then you'll have two legs that you can pull down and they can then take the weight of the awning. As I mentioned, I will send you a separate video showing you how this can operate. I can't really do it with just the one hand, um, but I will show you. Um, but please just bear in mind if it is a windy day, just to take it in. Uh, final thing as well on the awning, if it is raining, you can use it but please bear in mind that it will need, at some point, drying out. So if it's caught in rain, I tend to typically recommend it, putting it away. Um, but you do, bear in, uh, you do need to remember uh, that if you do get a warm day, you need to pull that awning out just to allow that canvas to dry. Because you don't want it to sit in there for a long period of wet, because it will just lead to mould and it will wreck the awning. So just remember that. So moving back to the other side, we've shown the inside of the garage. Uh, next up, you've then got your fill-up point for your fresh water tank. Now your fresh water tank will hold about 120 litres. All you'll need is a little key to unlock this and then you can take the, uh, the cap off and then using a food grade hose pipe, pop that into there and that will allow you to fill up the tank. Now when filling the tank up, I'd recommend, like I like a, uh, mentioned, a food grade hose pipe. The reason for that is it won't get any bacteria built up in the pipe, which will then put it into this inside of the vehicle. Um, but I personally wouldn't recommend drinking out of the fresh water tank. Uh, as you can imagine, it is a plastic tank at the, uh, um, which is fitted to the vehicle and you don't really know what is in the side of the tank. So it's fine for washing up and taking a shower. Um, but if you're drinking the water, I'd take bottled water. Now when that's overflowing, you've known, you, you've known you've filled it, so simple as. Of course, you will need to make sure that your drain down points for your fresh water tank are closed, and I'll show you how that can be done. Um, so then that way it doesn't drain on the outside of the vehicle. Next up, you've then got your hookup point. So this is where your 230 volt hookup cable can go in when you're on your campsite. This will gain you um, access to obviously how you, so this will allow you, sorry, to use your 230 volt uh, three pin plugs throughout the van uh, and will allow you to use anything that's 230 volts throughout the vehicle and then next up you've got your cassette locker in the cassette locker all you need to do is pull out like so and it'll gain you access to the cassette when draining this pull up on the orange uh, handle and slide this out just like so I'll just pop it onto the floor here for you to empty this all you'll need to do is pull out the funnel, remove the grey cap on the front, press the orange button at the back and that will release an internal vacuum allowing you to empty the entire contents of the cassette. Once you've done that, put a bit of water in here just to swill it out. And then if you are using blue fluid, you can use the cap as a measurement, put the blue fluid in there and then stick the cap back into position and tighten it into uh, to place. Once you've done that, fold the funnel back in uh, to the inside of the cassette and then the cassette can go back into the tray. Now you will also notice that you've got this orange tab here, this turns and twists. This will allow you to open and close the cassette when it's in situ. This shouldn't be moved, if you move that slightly it could potentially damage the cassette, it won't go back in. So please ensure that this remains in this position, you should never need to move it. This is what makes contact with the blade when you open and close the blade. And that's one bit of advice as well, when going to put it back in, just make sure obviously that's in the right position, but when you come to remove it, please ensure that the blade is closed. If the blade on the toilet is open, you'll come to remove this, 
and it'll get jammed. And what has happened before is customers have pulled it, it will ultimately break and then uh, you can't use your cassette. So please ensure that that blade is closed. And again, when we're on the inside, I will show you how that can be done. Next up is your external shower point. As I showed you before, you've got your external shower head provided with the vehicle that just clips in via a Jubilee clip here. It's just a push and turn fitting. Um, and then you've got access to your, hot, uh, your water. You will need your pump on for that to operate. Just bear that in mind. Just below there is your gas locker. As you can see, you've got access uh, or the capability of taking two gas bottles with your gas regulator, which is up at the top. There is a pigtail which is provided there. If you bring your gas bottles on the day, I will be more than happy to connect them up for you. When traveling, you need to ensure that these are all securely fastened. Uh, and one thing to bear in mind is, of course, when you're traveling, ensure that the gas is turned off. Now, you do have a crash sensor on here. That's what that black piece is connected to the regulator. So if you are involved in a crash, it will cut off the gas. But I always personally recommend that when you're traveling, the gas should always be turned off because you don't know what, could, what gas could be remaining in the pipes. So when traveling, turn it off. And when in use, simply turn it on. And you can just do that on the bottle itself. Moving on, you've then got your trim event. So this is in essence the vehicle's chimney. It can get quite hot this, so don't hang anything on here and just give it a bit of a wide berth. Uh, and that is the vent for the Truma boiler system. And then underneath, as I mentioned on the other side, is another larger uh, access hatch, which will allow you to access the underside of the floor. As you can see with that open, you've got a little bit of a deeper pocket here to store things like wheel chocks and things. And then up at the top, you can uh, you can store more slender items which go all the way through the vehicle. You have got a little light as well, which is quite handy if it is dark. So that concludes the outside of the motorhome. We're now going to move on to the inside. So moving on to the inside of the motorhome, just coming through the habitation door, you'll notice directly above, you've got your main control panel and then your control panel for your heating. So firstly, your heating control panel is dead simple. So everything below the line is what you want to select. So firstly, we've got the vehicle's temperature itself. You can take that all the way up to 30 degrees should you want to and just click the uh, middle ring just to, act, uh, just to select that. Next up, you've then got your water heating. So you can either have it on eco, hot or boost. Eco is approximately 40 degrees. Hot is approximately 70 degrees and boost will con concentrate on rather than heating the vehicle itself, heating the water. And it will last for about half an hour. Next up, you've then got your fuel. So you can select what you want the heating to run off. So you can either run it off EL2, which is two kilowatt electric, EL1, which is one kilowatt electric, mix two, which is a mixture of gas and two kilowatt electric, mix one, which, which is a mixture of gas and one kilowatt electric, and finally gas so depending on your situation and how you are using the vehicle you've got the option of a fuel if you're wild camping you'll obviously have to run it off gas but if you're hooked up on site you'll most definitely run it off el2 now certain sites especially when you go abroad don't provide you with much power so if you try to run it off el2 it might potentially fault you might trip the campsite or trip the van if that does happen you'll be forced to put it on el1 due to this due to this uh, the power that is provided to the van now in that case it, one kilowatt electric as it is quite a large space isn't really going to do much uh, in terms of heating it so if that is the case what i'd recommend is sticking it on either mix one or purely gas gas is the best uh, fuel to get it up to temperature and then if you stick it on electric it does a really good job of maintaining the temperature so just bear that in mind um, you'll also notice before we go back into it that as we are plugged in at the moment it does recognize that we are hooked up to 230 volt electric thanks to the little plug icon here next up You've then got your fan. Now, as I've not got anything selected at the moment, it's just given the option of vent, which will ventilate and circulate the air on the inside of the vehicle. But say, for example, I was supposed to, uh, I was um, uh, to turn the heating on. Uh, if I was to do that, if I go then back to the fan, it will give me the option of eco or high. So eco will, of course, turn the fan on and high is just a more intensified powered version of the fan. 
Coming down from there, you've then got a timer. So you can actually set a time of when you want the, uh, the trimmer heating to come on or off. You've then got the time itself, so you can change the time on the panel. And then finally, the most important bit really is the spanner, which is the settings. Within the settings, there's a couple of things like the brightness of the screen, the language. The main thing that you need to know is the reset button. So you'll need to reset the system if you get an error code on the panel. And if you're doing that, you just need to come up to the settings panel and reset it. Now, you'll tend to get an error code on the panel. Say, for example, you have selected a fuel that you've not got. What typically happens, say, for example, as I've no gas in the vehicle right now, if I was to run this heating off gas, it will fault because it's trying to power the vehicle with something that it's not got. So with that in mind, always ensure that you've got you select a fuel that you've got if it if that isn't the case and and unfortunately it does error code um you can simply just reset it through the panel by going as i say through to the settings and going all the way to reset now the reset process takes about 20 minutes you'll reset it and click preset and then the screen will flicker it'll say initializing and then the screen will come back on now although the screen looks like it will be you know fully op operational after about 30 seconds you will need to wait a full 20 minutes for that reset to work effectively so just bear that in mind one thing to bear in mind as well is before you um say for example you're finishing on site and before you say you're running this uh, trimmer heating system off electric before removing the electric source always turn this panel off and you do that by holding the button down holding it in for a few seconds and then it will say off because say for example i was to remove that hookup cable now with that panel still on it would simply error code and fault so that would mean that next time you come to use the van you'd have to reset the system and wait 20 minutes which is a bit of a pain so if you can remember to always turn that panel off before you remove the fuel to stop it from um, giving you an error code it will just save you a bit of time when you come to use the vehicle next next to that you've also got some temperature sensors which are linked to the Truma heating Okie dokie, so coming over to the main control panel for the vehicle, you've got your on and off switch here, which is your main isolator for the vehicle itself. That will turn on everything in the motorhome. Underneath that, you've then got your vehicle battery level. So firstly, it shows you that you've got um, your voltage for your habitation battery, which is just here, as indicated by a little motorhome in the battery. You can see at the moment, we're pretty much uh, full because we're, uh, we are plugged in. And the same story for the leisure uh, for the um, vehicle battery. So you've got your leisure battery on this side, oh, leisure battery on this side, vehicle battery on this side. And again, for the vehicle battery, you can see that we are not far off full. Next up, click this little button here. This is the one underneath from the battery, and this will show you your water levels. So your fresh water level. You can see we've not got anything in and same for the wastewater level reading zero percent next up up at the top here you've then got your light switch button that will turn on and off all your lights in the vehicle you can then use the lights here to turn the individual lights on and off throughout the motorhome underneath that you've then got your pump button which I won't run because we've not got any water in the vehicle at the moment. Please ensure that you only run the pump when you've water in the vehicle because you don't want to burn the pump out. So once you've got the water in the system, click your pump on and then go to all of your taps, including your shower, and then turn all your taps on and turn them to hot. What that will do is it will pull fresh water from the fresh water tank into the boiler and then out of the tap. It will spurt and splutter, and then when it's running steadily, you prime your system for your hot water. Once you've done that, flick it over to cold, and again, it will spurt and splutter, and when it's running steadily, you're good to go, you've primed your system. Once you've done that, you can actually leave your pump on, um, because each of your taps have got something called a micro switch, which will activate and deactivate the pump whenever you need it, um, so don't worry about it burning out or anything the only time you do need to turn that pump off is when you've not got any water in the vehicle because if you do leave one of these taps on by mistake it will eventually burn the pump out now just a quick thing just about uh priming your water on the hot water 
the boiler that is fitted to this vehicle will fill uh, will take about 10 litres of water so it takes a hefty amount of water now with that in mind if you are pulling water through it is going to take a while so just be patient with it um, it will take a, a while to purge and prime the system because it's, it's having to pull it from the fresh water tank all the way through the boiler and then out of the tap so it's going to take a, a you know a bit of time um, but as I say just be a, a little bit more patient with that it will be quicker on the fresh water one thing as well that I'd recommend and it's the reason I tell you to put it on hot first is that will pull fresh water as I mentioned through the boiler and it will prime the boiler itself so when you're on site and you're filled up with water if you prime all of your taps and you've got everything through and you've primed that boiler uh, and everything's good to go when you you go up to your Truma control panel and turn your heating on as I've just shown you for the water that will then allow the boiler to start heating that water up so if that's the first thing that you do it will give you a chance to get everything sorted and then by the time everything's sorted in the van and you're ready for some warm water it'll be nice and ready up to temperature because that water is going to take about 30 minutes to heat up depending on what fuel you've got available at the time whether it's it's gas or electric so just bear that in mind <laughs> Now, coming back up to the control panel, underneath that you've then got a little light that indicates on the side, that's actually the awning light or the door light which is on the outside of the vehicle, and then underneath that you've got a little aux button there, click that, and what that will do is it will turn on all your 12 volt points in the van. To give you a bit of an in indicator, you can see when I've turned that aux button on, that will turn this blue. On here and that will allow you to use all your 12 volt points and your USBs and everything in the motorhome if you leave that on. So put that on if you want to watch your TV, run it off your 12 volt and use the USB sockets which are uh, dotted around the motorhome. The main control panel uh, or the home screen shall we say that pops up will give you the time and also you uh, will show you just some basic levels but as i say if you go through these little switches here it will show you the correct levels that you need and the exact levels uh, of what your tanks and your batteries are at now coming away from the control panel and into the lounge area as i mentioned before this is the ds model so you've got two bench seats uh, either side of the motorhome now underneath this bench seat as you can see underneath here now it's going to be a little bit difficult to show you on the video uh, as it is quite hard to see because so i'll show you this on the day um, but underneath here you've got that little green button which is actually linked to the cbe um, uh, battery charger so leave that on that should always be glowing green and then on the other side you've actually got your fuse box i don't know whether you can see up there it is quite dark so apologies for that like i mentioned i can show you on the day of handover but in there that is where all the fuses are so if anything trips and blows you can simply come to the control panel underneath there at the fuse box rather and replace the fuse and what i would re recommend is taking some spare fuses with you because they're just generic fuses and if anything you know blows it's, it'll be dead simple and easy to simply changing them now in the lounge area to set up the uh one of the uh the uh traveling seats i'll show you how that can be done uh now it is dead easy all you've got to do is remove the cushions and just rearrange them and then using one of those backrests that you found in the garage they just slot into a point here now i'll do that for you now so step one as you can see i removed all the cushions uh these are the mounting points that I mentioned where the backrest slots in. Now the backrest will slot in here and you can see there's a little nut here which you can tighten and that will allow you to tighten that into position for, for your forward facing seat. And just like that you can see the backrest has been slotted into place. That just connects into here and then like I mentioned you've got this little nut here that can tighten it into position. Now underneath here these then flip under so this will fall back like so and this will then connect like that so the passenger's legs can sit into there ready for travel and transit and as you can see using the backrest i've just placed that onto there i've just pulled out as well the little uh, latch to allow your seat belt to connect into position and you've got the backrest there ready for travel 
Underneath here as well, you will notice that when folding back these panels, you have got a red switch here. This will allow you to turn the battery off as indicated by the sticker here. This is a full isolator switch that you can isolate the entire vehicle with. You don't need to bother with that. This is really just for the technicians when working on the vehicle. Just bear in mind, you don't want to kick that either because if you do kick it uh, and potentially turn it, it will shut down the entire system. So just bear that in mind. Underneath this seat as well, I've just lifted it up. That's actually a better angle just to show you where the uh, uh, where the point is for your fuses. So you've got your fuses which are just up here and then you've got uh, that battery master that I was just describing before. So that way you can see nice and accessible so you can either access it through the hatch that I showed you before or just by lifting this seat up which is probably a little bit easier. And just like that you are then back to your bench seat it's the same for this side as well the exact same um, so again nice and simple now underneath this other seat you can see I've just removed some of the uh, some of the cushions if I fold this up you can see you've actually got a 230 volt electric point here um, but what I wanted to show you is the second drain down point which is for the boiler so you can see that it's just located here now this is actually a frost protection valve and this will drain down the entire boiler it's called a frost protection valve because this reacts to temperature so if it if it senses that the, the vehicle if it gets to a temperature and it, it fears that the that it's potentially going to freeze the water this will automatically trip the boiler and drain all the contents out so it's really handy and really good to have now to seal this unit all you've got to do is simply turn the valve like so so then the diamond is facing the other way and the black nib goes in and then on the outside you'll notice that there's a little blue button press that in and that is flush and then that is the boiler sealed so you can then begin filling up the boiler with water to empty this just simply turn the diamond you can see that blue button pings out you should still drain this tank down although it is a frost protection valve and will trip automatically you should still get in the habit of having this drain down just in case it fails um, but like I mentioned it will drain down if you have forgotten about it one thing to bear in mind that um, as this does react to temperature if you've not used the vehicle in a long while or you are using it in extremely cold conditions sometimes when you go to seal this unit so you go to turn the diamond and then you go to press the blue button in at the side this button will keep pinging out the reason for that is it as i mentioned this this unit reacts to temperature and it's just in fear that potentially the water could freeze in the boiler so if that is the case you just need to turn your heating on not the water heating but the vehicle heating itself this area will get nice and warm and then after about 30 minutes this will be ready to seal you can then press the button in and fill up your boiler full of water and as i as i mentioned for the wastewater same thing goes for the boiler leave this open when you're traveling home just to make sure the residual water finds its way out and of course uh, just drain down the majority of the water on site over the grid moving on from the side bench in the floor as i mentioned you've got a double height floor in here to access this you've got little access points on the inside of the vehicle so that's just part two of your floor there you can see this is all fully heated and insulated as well so if you're putting anything and wet in there you're absolutely fine to do so underneath these two you've got access to your leisure battery and then underneath the one that i'm actually standing on currently that is another access point to a second leisure battery should you ever need it slot that back down facing the front area you can see as this is an a-class you've got a drop down bed fitted on the inside of the vehicle to drop this bed you will need to fold the two front seats down they face forward or backwards it doesn't matter which way and then remove the clip through the press stud like so and then all you've got to do is pull the bracket forward it's easier with two hands and then that will release the bed mechanism you can then swing and drop the bed all the way down into the front cab as you can see i've just folded the two front seats just by pulling these clips that will fold the seats forward and then i can drop the bed and just like so 
the bed is ready to be used. You've got your bed ladder, which is on here, which will connect onto these points. Uh, and all your bedding can be left on here, including uh, your pillows. You've also got a net underneath here, which will connect onto here, should you need it. If anyone is rolling out, it'll prevent them from rolling out. Moving backwards, back into the kitchen area, you've got a really good bit of storage, which is through here. To, op to operate these, simply push the clip in, and which will allow the handle to ping out. And then you can pull the drawer out. We've spoken about priming the system. Your hob is three gas burners, so of course you will need your gas hob on for that to operate. And then you've got a really good bit of storage in all of your lockers, all at the front here should you need to access them. Directly above the lounge area, you've also got a big fly screen, um, and, sorry, a big skylight, which has got a uh, blackout blind and a fly screen already inbuilt. And to open this, all you've got to do is push in on this clip, and that will allow you to slide the fly screen, uh, sorry, the sky roof back. You can also put this on venting should you want to, but please ensure that when you're traveling, these are all sealed correctly. You don't want any wind coming underneath here, which could potentially tear the window off. The same goes for all of your side windows. You can see you can open these just by using the little clips here. You do need to press in on the little black button there, and then you can open them up like so. You do have, again, the option of putting these on venting just for a little bit of airflow through the vehicle. But please ensure that when travelling, again, these are sealed correctly. And you've got blackout blinds on these and fly screens. The only window that can be left open is this side window here, as this is a side window which does not obviously go on the outside of the vehicle, so doesn't cause a hazard. Opposite the kitchen area, you've got your tech tower, and above that, this vehicle is fitted with a solar panel, so you can see the solar panel regulator is just in there, and your motorhome Wi-Fi, which this vehicle has been fitted with, is just located there. Now, the motorhome Wi-Fi, I will show you uh, on handover. Just provide a SIM on the day, and I will happily stick that in there and set the motorhome Wi-Fi up for you. It'll be a lot easier for me to show you on the day with that unit. Your solar panel regulator, just coming back to that, you don't need to do anything with that, providing that's green, it is good to go, you can see that it is on. Now as we are underneath the canopy at the moment, it's not getting any charge, but once it is out in the sun, that will begin to charge the leisure battery. You've then got your oven, which is just below that, and then your Dometic fridge. Now this Dometic fridge is a three-way fridge which basically means there's three ways to fuel it. So you can either run it off your 12 volt leisure battery, your gas, or your 230 volt electric, depending on what fuel you've got available. All you've got to do to turn it on is hold this button. As you can see, that lights up the fridge. Now to flick through the options of what you want to fuel the fridge on, you can select mode, just like so, and that will change through the options of what you've got. Now the great thing with this fridge is it's got an automatic function, which will automat sorry, automatically assign whichever fuel you've got to the fridge, which is dead handy. So I'd personally leave it on that. You can see that we're currently plugged into electric, so it's found that we're plugged into electric, and it's automatically assigned electric to fuel the fridge and the freezer. Now, when you're traveling, all you need to do is run it off your 12 volt electric. When you're wild camping, simply run it off gas, and then when you're hooked up, run it off 230 volt and as I say if you leave it on that auto it will just assign it for you now if you do knock it off uh, what you might potentially uh, do is what a lot of people think is if the wild camping they can actually run this fridge off the 12 volt leisure battery that isn't the case unfortunately you can only run it off gas if it was to run off the 12 volt it will not work it won't power up uh, the reason for that is if it was to run off the leisure battery, it just draws too much power and it would leave you without any power. So when you're wild camping, it's always gas. And when you're traveling with the uh, vehicle ignition on, it's 12 volts. As this vehicle has got an alternator, which when the vehicle battery is running, it will send power to the leisure battery, which can then power the fridge. But as I say, time and time again, leave it on the auto. It will automatically assign whichever you've got. You then got the option of temperature. You can change the temperature of the fridge using this button here. Uh, and if you ever get an error code on the fridge and it needs resetting, there'll be a light that indicates 
on this triangle here, you can reset the fridge through there. Now, this fridge has got a freezer up at the top, fridge is below, and you can access the fridge and fridge freezer either side, thanks to these handles. Moving on to the rear of the vehicle, you've got a little light switch here which will turn on the lights in the bedroom area. You've also got these concertina doors that you can pull across and divide the rear bedroom. Now, if you want to have it the other way, um, so say for example, uh, the people in the back want to use the bathroom area, you can use this door which will shut off completely the entire front section. So it depends on who's using the bathroom. If the front guests are using it, close these doors and obviously if these guys are using it just simply pull that door too so the shower's to one side now the shower we've discussed obviously about priming the system so there's not much to it uh, one thing about the shower is just bear in mind um, about if you are storing anything on here just be careful about cracking the shower base don't try don't store anything too heavy on there um, and you've also got in the shower a little hook here where you can hang your items up to dry on the other side you've then got your bathroom now the light switch in the bathroom is actually located just here click that on and give you a little bit of light and again like i mentioned we have talked about priming the system the main thing that you need to know is the blade on the toilet and how to operate it you've got this blade here which is this piece of plastic currently the blade is uh, is pulled towards me uh, and it is closed push it away from you to open it so when the cassette is in use push it away so all the waste can drop into the cassette once you've done that click the blue button which is up at the top here that will activate your flush and flush the entire system once you've done that pull the, uh, the blade again towards you to shut the cassette and you're good to go now you close the blade for two reasons the main reason being is it will stop odors from escaping from the cassette but also it will get you into the habit of when removing the cassette you don't fall into the uh, the um, the trap of it getting stuck or forced and subsequently breaking now one thing to mention is this blue button will activate your pump uh, your flush you do need your pump on for that to activate so bear that in mind and when the cassette is full you will also have a little red light on here to indicate that it needs emptying. Underneath the sink as well, you've also got a trip switch. So if the vehicle trips, you can come to this point here. It's literally directly underneath the sink. And you can also see up here, you've also another 230 volt electric point. Now, moving over to the bathroom, uh, sorry, from the bathroom area to the bedroom area. Um, just to wrap up the video, you've got storage either side with hanging space. Um, and as I say, we've spoken about how to raise and lower the bed. At the moment, it is at its lowest position. Uh, in the floor, you'll notice you've got another hatch here, which is for a little bit of storage. But underneath here, you've also got a point for where you can drain down your fresh water tank. You'll notice there's a little hatch here that can be removed so you can gain access to the fresh water. Now, as I mentioned, fresh water tanks hold about 120 litres. Now, you have got a, dr a quick drain down point um, located on here. So if you're wanting to drain the entire tank down to 20 litres, which you can do, all you'll need to do is turn this valve and there's a little lug. You won't, you might not be able to hear it on the video. There we are. I think you might may have heard that. That little click, all you've got to do is uh, simply uh, turn this valve up until that point before it clicks uh, and you'll feel the lug and then it will drain everything down to 20 litres. Now, if you want to drain the entire tank out, all you've got to do is carry on past that lug until you can't turn it anymore and then that will drain the entire 120 litres out of the vehicle. The reason they do this is the re manufacturer recommend when you're travelling with water, you travel with only 20 litres in the tank. If you travel with anything more, uh, it will affect your weight distribution and your payload, as you can imagine. So when you're travelling with water, travel with 20 litres, and to do that, you can simply use that quick drain down point. But like I say, if you want to drain the entire thing down, just drain past that lug, and that will allow you to dump the entire water. And again, for the wastewater and boiler, same goes for this. Drain the majority on site and then leave it open when you're traveling home. And that concludes the handover video on this Leica Ecobit H4112DS. I hope you enjoyed.